Hello YouTube, my name is Ace and you're watching NBA Draft News for November 13th and November 14th. If you haven't heard of this before, I pretty much just comp compile like all the NBA news articles I can find and pretty much turn it into an audiobook so you can just put it on in the background and then you can have on your screen whatever is more important, which probably isn't important and you're probably just focused on the video. Anyways, <laughs> let's talk about um, subscribers, yeah, subscribe, please, um, making, trying to make this insane push to a thousand subscribers by the end of November, we're almost halfway through November, and I'm sitting around 200 subscribers, rounding up, we got a ways to go, but, yeah, every subscriber really counts, and maybe click like as well for the people who are already subscribed, also helps out the videos, helps out the channel, let's talk NBA draft news, it didn't have a thumbnail for today but I guess we'll just keep going well, Mellow Ball working out for additional teams actually I think we talked about in this in the last video working with the Warriors Hornets Pistons and interviewed with the Bulls so people doing their research for sure Pistons working out Christian Woods contract so it sounds like they are actually gonna make the contract happen and he could he can earn from 9.3 mil to 18 mil a season, kind of like and that's happened is like Miles Turner this year, so or Miles Turner's contract. Other big men news, uh, Joel Okafor might be a good guy for the Pistons, especially if they're not going to end up drafting a center in this draft. Definitely agree with that. Okafor is not really getting contracts from. Anyone not named the Hornets, I think it's just going to be the Hornets and the Pistons are going to be the only teams uh, offering J Jalil Okafor, and yeah, for sure, they can pick up Jalil Okafor, really good option. He's not a bad player at all, but I just don't think most teams are willing to play him. Uh, Gillian Hayes has worked out for the Pistons, but they're drafting Patrick Williams. I don't really know why they're drafting Patrick Williams, but they are going to be drafting Patrick Williams, so... Austin Rivers is going to decline his player option and become an unrestricted free agent. Let's see what he does with that. I think that could be pretty interesting for sure. Uh, talking some Southeast notes. Wizards trying to figure out their money. <laughs> you know, with Davis Bertans re-signing him, maybe a sign and trade. We got Killian Hayes has worked out for the Magic, even though they're at 15. They are looking to trade up in this draft. I think they're targeting Kyra Lewis, though. I really, really feel like they're targeting Kyra Lewis. Actually, tomorrow is going to be my first mock draft. Well, my only mock draft where I try to accurately... These are my accurate predictions of what I think is going to happen draft night. It's going to be in that video tomorrow. And, yeah, it's going to be something to look back on for sure. I think it's going to be really interesting. And I'll tell you right now, Patrick Williams is on the Pistons. <laughs> I don't think I should be that big of a spoiler. Cody Zeller is not sweating the possibility that he might be traded. Yeah, I don't think he really cares. He's actually a solid player. I think he just gets underrated because he's on the Hornets. And the Magic will have limited cap flexibility to add players. I mean, they're paying guys like Al Farouk Aminu, you know, uh, Nikola Vucevic. Uh, Evan Fournier, and they also need to re-sign Fultz, if I'm correct. I'm not sure. Warriors aim to use rapid testing of that, uh, the word that I can't say, to open arena at 50% capacity. That actually sounds kind of insane. I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of hoping the Suns do this, because if you don't hear, I missed them going to a Suns game last season. I was planning to go right before everything shut down. <laughs> yeah. I was literally, like, about to, like, buy tickets for, like, the week after it shut down. So, Cavs zeroing in on Denny of Diaz and Obi Toppin as their top targets. Yes. This is not the only report I've seen about this. And, yeah, they're only looking at Avdia or Toppin. If Avdia falls, they'll take him, but otherwise they want Toppin at five. Udon Haslam is coming back for another another season with the Heat. That's, I guess, that's something that's happening. Lakers offseason preview. I'm not reading it. 
linked in the description if you want to read it. It's just some big article that they write up in Hoops Rumors. So, Celtics have explored the possibility of packaging their three first round picks to move into the middle of the lottery. Yeah, they could also use those picks to trade for Drew Holiday. And Boston has been, quote unquote, enamored with, end quote, Isaac Okoro, and he would be the target that the team trades up for. Actually, not what I was expecting. I think most people who aren't exactly, you know, interested with the Celtics and figuring out what they do, um, I thought it was Onyeka Kungmu. I thought that's who they were targeting for the longest time. Clarifying some comments he made to French newspaper Celtics center Vincent Poirier said that he wasn't upset about his limited role, but he needs to earn those minutes. Okay. I, I think we didn't need to have a clarification on that, you know, because you're not going to play anyways. Um, this guy, a oh, Toronto news writer, is not reading much into Fred Van Leet's comments about trying to get paid in free agency. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I really don't know about that one. Jalen Smith has not, has not talked about what teams he's worked out for, and that's really interesting to me. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe he's a promise. He probably is a promise, honestly. Old Depot tells Pacers he's fully committed to the team. And we also said in the last start, in the last video that he's moody and he has mood swings and he doesn't like <laughs> he's gonna change with the days, you know? So we'll see what happens there. Knicks have weighed Russell Westbrook trade and they're considering it, but they shouldn't do it. Teams frustrated by lack of info from NBA on restart. Um no one really knows what's going on other than that date that they listed, so. Um, here's a list of all the head coaching recap thing for Nets, Bulls, Rockets, Pacers, Clippers, Pelicans, Knicks, Thunder, 76ers. They're all there. And I've talked I think I've talked about all the head coaching jobs. Pretty much a lot of assistant coaches, so uh, you can go read that link in the description if you really want to keep detailed, you know, notes on that. Hornets notes. Talking about an interest in Russell Westbrook. I think <laughs> Hornets just want to add anything they can to, you know, sell tickets, you know, or get people to watch their games. Um, Hornets might have to consider how the presence of Westbrook would affect Devontae Graham's development. It really does look like Westbrook does hamper... The development of players, you see Sabonis and Old Depot instantly leave the Thunder and turn into All Stars, and and you see, actually, I don't really think there's many other great examples, but yeah, it does look like there that could be a legitimate worry about Westbrook. Talking, uh, this guy's debating pros and cons of dra drafting James Wiseman at three. I don't really know. I guess they could do it. I don't, I don't love James Wiseman at three. I think you should go with Denny of Dia at three. I mean, if I was the GM and I did my workouts and I did my interviews, I'm drafting Denny of Dia at three, regardless of whatever new information I uncover, you know? Uh, Hornets coach James Rago suggested there are a number of areas he'd like to see the team address this off season. So yeah, I mean, your team kind of sucks. Shouldn't have to tell you that. Avery Bradley. I mean, he's just in a situation where he's screwed. He's not... I mean, he has this outside chance of making the playoffs, but not really much else, you know? Avery Bradley changes a agents. Uh, Lakers worked out Nico Mannion. Please don't do it. This guy's having, you know, issues with interviews, and he wasn't... He absolutely crumbled at Arizona. How do you think he's going to go to the L.A. Lakers and turn into a good player? You know, I just feel like that would be terrible for Nico Mannion. Um, I think Nico Mannion's career would be ruined. I think Nico Mannion would never turn into anything with the Lakers. The uh, Lakers are interested in DeMar DeRozan. I don't know why. And Westbrook would give the Clippers a third star, but they shouldn't do it. <laughs> I don't think it takes a genius to tell you that. Or... I don't even think it takes you, like, <laughs> a guy who doesn't even know anything with basketball. Actually, let's take that back. I mean, I guess he's an MVP, technically. But, Marcus Cousins still recovering from the torn ACL in his left knee and may not 
be ready to play when the 2021 season begins in December. Okay. Uh, I think he's tweeting about it. I think he's, I think he just tweeted cap. I think that was all he tweeted. Um, Knicks are in the best position in terms of cap space next offseason. And then Spurs, Hornets, Hawks, and Heat will also have max money for the next offseason. It's a good chance that two-way players will be able to remain with their NBA teams for more than 45 days for the upcoming season. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's 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 very interesting, I would say. I don't know what else to say about that. Um, let's go to the next article. Some teams like the Wizards, Heat, and Magic are interested in Cole Anthony. So, I don't really know where he's going to get drafted. I think I had him drop all the way to 30, I believe, in my most recent mock draft. So... Devin Vassell has worked out for a handful of teams, including Knicks, Warriors, Celtics, Hawks, and Magic. So, he could end up going top 10, or he could drop a little bit, you know? Theo Maldon's worked out for the Spurs, Nets, Celtics, and Raptors. I don't know why the Nets would draft him, but those other three, those other teams... Actually, the Spurs are nowhere close to being in range to draft him, but... Raptors and Celtics are in feasible places to draft him. Pelicans were the only team to work out Tyrese Maxey. Pretty interesting. If that has anything to do with Rich Paul, I would start questioning Rich Paul's judgment a little bit, you know? I would just, you know, just just start putting it out there. Because I felt like Rich Paul was one of the best agents in the game up until this point. Um, if this doesn't turn out well for Tyrese Maxey, I'm going to start questioning his judgment, you know? Community shoot around for LaMelo Ball talking about where he's going to get drafted because it's pretty crazy or whatever team's going to trade for him, you know. Luis Scola int intends to retire after the 2021 Olympics in Tokyo. Oh, I really hope they upset one of the top four teams. Uh, Argentina, I believe, he's playing for. And yeah, Argentina. Um, I really hope they upset one of the big four teams and because uh, I think Luis Scola can legitimately do that. He's playing insanely well at FIBA and um, yeah he played insanely well during FIBA basketball absolutely went off he was prime Luis Scola at age 39 if he can turn it up again at like age 40 41 you know if he can do that I think he can take out one of those top four teams USA Serbia Greece or Spain it, I think he could le legitimately do it and it would be amazing it would be Historic. It would be one of the landmarks of his career, you know. Wouldn't be the, one of his greatest achievements. Bulls named their coaching staff under Billy Donovan, so there it is. Mo Cheeks is the headliner, and a bunch of other guys. And then we have Mavericks are interested in pursuing Danilo Gallinari. Yeah, I mean, we talk. I'm pretty sure we were. T I mean, I physically didn't talk about it, but there was rumors that. Gallo is going to be traded to the Mavericks at the trade deadline, I believe. So, and he could, yeah, Dallas will likely join a significant number of suitors for Gallinari, with rival teams expecting that he'll join a contender, especially if the Thunder do trade Chris Paul. One of the most interesting players, 6'10", and could abs can absolutely score the ball, you know? Lakers are willing to trade Danny Green. Can you really do that to that man after what he went through with your team? I feel like that's that's dirty, even. That's dirty. Like, what he went through, like, how much he was getting bullied by your, you know, fans. That's, I don't think that's okay. I don't think you can just trade this man away. It's like you're giving in to the hate and everything. And that's, that's something you can't do at this point, I don't think. The Knicks, if they acquire... Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook in a trade. Multiple teams should expect the club to pursue veterans of free agency in hopes of making a playoff push this season. That's pretty wild. Christian Wood is apparently the Knicks' number one free agency target. That's interesting. And the Knicks will decline Bobby Portis and he'll enter free agency. And they, re they, they plan to retain Reggie Bullock and Alfred Payton. So that's interesting if anyone cares. Um, NBA targeting mid-December preseason. I guess they're going to play some games. I don't know about that. Giannis briefly discussed his future with the team in a recent interview. Uh, he says, I will do what is best for my family. 
I do not see why I could not be in Milwaukee for several years, as long as Milwaukee are, and I are on the same page when it comes to being one of the best teams in the league and winning championship, that's fine. When it changes, it will not be good. It's easy, I want to be a winner. I do not care about the money. And as long as we win and create a winning culture, it will be good. Uh, I don't know what the plan is. Depends on what decisions they make. If they make the right decisions, I'll be there for many years. If they do not, we'll see. The NBA is business and we'll take it day by day. Hopefully, we can succeed together. Okay, that's nice, uh, Giannis. Sound like you like the Bucks, but you will instantly leave to play with Jimmy Butler, I think. <laughs> Jimmy Butler made that Heat team look so good. He's he's like he's like a Chris Paul, Steve Nash type guy. I mean, even though he isn't that number one playmaker guy who always has the ball, you know, he's somehow done it in a way that I don't think's ever been done before. You know. Anyways, Hawks are expected to be aggressive but smart in free agency. Okay, that's interesting. I don't really know what that means. Uh. Chris Finch will join the Raptors after leaving New Orleans. And the Knicks are considering drafting Peyton Pritchard at 27. So, I think he already has a promise. I don't know where, but we'll see about that. And Karan Butler joins the Heat as an assistant coach. which That's pretty interesting. Let's go on to some Bleacher Report. Denny of Dia, source of significant buzz ahead of 2020 NBA draft. I don't know. I really... I think... He has, out of all the prospects in this draft, I think he's legitimately the most chance of making that jump into the top three over Wiseman, Edwards, or Ball. I think it's got to be Evdia if someone jumps up. And I think he could legitimately go number two or number three in this draft. I don't think it's that cut, cut and clear, or cut and dry top three that people would like you to believe. I think if Dia's legitimately... Like, it, I think it's a top four. I don't think it's a top three. I think it's top four, you know. And I think of Diaz, one of the best prospects out of this draft. Latest rumors on these guys. Wiseman, a legitimate candidate to go number one. I've talked about that. Cavs, intrigued by Diaz, talked about that. And Knicks are having difficulty trading up. Uh, who wrote this article? Is it Wu? Oh, Mar Martin Fenn? This guy doesn't write anything for them, does he? I don't think I've ever seen a red... Yeah, there's Kazabian. Uh, actually, I don't know who that is either, but... This dude, I don't know what you're on about. I really don't know what you're on about. Nick's son, Spurs Magic, open to trading up. Or, at least trading. Obviously, I think the Magic want to trade down... Or, sorry. The Suns want to trade down to around 14 or 15. Magic want to trade up. And, you know, the Spurs want to trade up. And the Knicks want to trade up. So, yeah, I'm not reading that article. What should do? What the Suns should do with the number 10 overall pick, Dwayne Rankin, of course. Trade up or trade down. Trade with a player to a team with players and picks. The Suns have shown the last two drafts with GM jo James Jones that they'll maneuver to land the players that they want. So they're probably going to do something similar in this draft. So let's see who Dwayne Rankin is talking about. Tyrell Terry, Aaron Nesmith, De Desmond Bain, Kyra Lewis. Um, Dwayne Rankin keeps talking about Kyra Lewis. Talking, I mean, I have a lot of Suns fans in the comments section, and he's talking about how Kyra Lewis is absolutely not going to be drafted by the Suns. I really don't know about that one. I think they're really legitimately considering Kyra Lewis, and Dwayne Rankin seems to be really set on this. Dwayne Rankin is the biggest expert, the biggest expert on the Suns that I know. So I'm going to believe, you know, Dwayne Rankin over some guy in the comments section, okay? Trade down to find size and shooting, you know? Tyrell Terry, tra trade up to land top prospect or best player available. Yeah. You know, you can see Kyra Lewis, Kongwu, Koro, Vassell all drop. Actually, Kyra Lewis wouldn't be a drop, but those other three guys drop. And that, you know, makes the situation a lot more interesting, especially if they drop, you know. Um, some international prospects to talk about. Uh, Denny of Dia. Yeah, he's super interesting. I think they might be talking about Killian Hayes right here. Um, I guess it's linked in the description if you want to learn more about these first-round pick prospects like uh, Hayes of Dia, Malden, Wolmaro, and Pogusevsky. So, yeah. 
finally talking about Giannis is crowned as the biggest NBA draft steal. And there's literally, like, how many sentences is this? I thought this was going to be more interesting. I didn't read the article beforehand. It's literally two sentences. Anyways, now that's going to wrap it up for this video. Made it short and concise. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're still here, like and subscribe. Because I shouldn't have to tell you that you like the video if you're still here. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.